It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. In 1968, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., along with other civil rights leaders, launched a poor people's campaign. It was an effort to end poverty, racism, and militarism in America. The time has come for America to hear the truth about this tragic war. I've chosen to preach about the war in Vietnam today because I agree with Dante that the hottest places in hell are reserved for those who in a period of moral crisis maintain their neutrality. We must also realize that the problems of racial injustice and economic injustice cannot be solved without a radical redistribution of political and economic power. We are tired of our children All right. having to attend overcrowded, inferior schools. Take it plain. And we are tired of our men not being able to be men because they can't find work. 1,300 sanitation workers are on strike, and Memphis is not being fair to them. The issue is the refusal of Memphis to be fair and honest in its dealings with its public servants who happen to be sanitation workers. Last week, a revival of this campaign was launched. Let's have a look. Everybody's got a right to live. You know, this feels like the old mass meetings. We're here in all of our diversity. We're here in the human family. There is a fire raging now for the poor of this society. They are living in tragic conditions because of the terrible economic injustices that keep them locked in. We have to deal with our war economy and systemic racism and systemic poverty and ecological devastation. And finally, we have to deal with the moral narrative. On to talk about the campaign with me is Dr. Reverend Liz Theo Harris. She is co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. She is co-director of the Cairo Center for Religions, Rights, and Social Justice. So she also teaches at Union Theological Seminary. Liz, very good to have you with us. It's really good to be here. Thanks for having me. Liz, you've launched an incredible campaign with a coalition of uh, people coming together, creating a movement. Describe the movement and the moment we are in that provided the conditions and the need to relaunch Dr. King's Poor People's Campaign. So we're living in, in, a, in a difficult and dangerous time. There are 44% of Americans are, are living at or below poverty. Um, the, you know, racism is rampant. Um, militarization of our communities is, is raging. And, and we're posed with a, a, a moral crisis where people are being denied healthcare and food and education. And so grassroots communities for many years have been saying, we need to come together. We need to come together across race, across geography, across the issues, um, and build something that is is strong and sustainable and can can change the direction that our society is going in. And so years ago, actually, grassroots leaders said, we take inspiration from the Poor People's Campaign that Dr. King and Cesar Chavez and Miles Horton and other leaders, the welfare rights movement, um, were talking about and 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 planning and, and carried out back in 67, 68. And um, we said, as we approach the 50th anniversary of this historic campaign, you can't commemorate something that has not yet been fully realized. Um, and that we don't need just a moment or another action or activity, but we need to launch 
a season of organizing, um, a real campaign to unite the bottom of this country, to be able to, to bring about real change, to shift the narrative that is, that is demonizing people for the problems that they're facing, um, and build power from the bottom up, um, to nationalize state-based movements. And so what we did last week with the launching of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, was bring together many forces that have been organizing in their local communities for a while and bring them onto national stage to say that in the spring of 2018, as we reach the, the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King, as we reach the 50th anniversary of the launch of the 1968 Poor People's Campaign, that what we need today in these times is a, a new Poor People's Campaign and a national call for moral revival. And so, so that is on, that is happening, and people across the country in the thousands are, are, are getting involved and signed up to be a part of something really big. Liz, uh, you said a season of action. So what does that look like to you and what do you expect? So we are talking about um, and calling for 40 days of moral direct action, 40 days of, um, of organizing public education, um, advocacy work, and nonviolent civil disobedience um, in state capitals across the United States and in Washington, D.C., um, and so what this 40 days that will start on Mother's Day, um, May 13th of 2018, and go until June 21st, the summer solstice, um, is uh, six weeks of, of, of grassroots space building, organizing, and, and action um, across the country. And, and the, the purpose of that is because we think we need more than a tweet to break through this moment. We think we need more than a mobilization or an action, more than just one policy or program proposed. But we need people to come together from the ground up and to stay together to be able to both carry out a season of organizing and have that be the beginning of not the culmination of, but the beginning of launching fusion movements, um, moral movements, grassroots movements across this country who can, you know, really bring an end to poverty and systemic racism, militarization in the war economy, and the kind of ecological devastation that are, are plaguing our nation. Liz, last week when you launched this campaign, uh, it was done with a lot of data. I mean, everyone who spoke uh, spoke about the tax bill and what it was going to do to poor folks. So tell me about how you're backing this campaign in terms of the data and the research that you need in order to, to be effective and talk very tangibly about the conditions of the poor? We have a, a philosophy in, in our movement, which is that you can't be loud and wrong, um, that, that whatever activities that we're doing um, to get attention to what's going on in the world have to be based on you know, in the facts, figures, and faces of, of what's really taking place. And so we, we all know some of the statistics, but we have been working with the Institute for Policy Studies, and a team of researchers, academics, policymakers, impacted folks, um, organizations of grassroots leaders to conduct uh, the Souls of Poor Folk audit. Liz, give us a, a sense of the conditions that poor people are facing, particularly compared to 1968. Yeah, I mean, so what, what we found, you know, in and put out in this preliminary report is, you know, that 60 percent more people, more Americans are living in poverty than in 1968. Um, that, you know, today, 43.5% of people in the United States, um, nearly one in two, are poor or low income. That 52 years after the Voting Rights Act, um, that we actually have fewer voting rights um, than, than we did 40, 52 years ago. That, uh, that there are, are 4 million families um, that are facing um, undrinkable um, poisoned water um, just every day in the United States. That actually there are more deaths because of pollution than any other causes. That, that 250,000 people every year 
basically die because of poverty, um, low education rates, um, the kinds of, of social ills that are plaguing our nation. And that's more than, you know, heart attacks and, and car accidents and, you know, all of the other kind of more common, you know, thoughts about of, of why people are dying. And so the conditions are grave. I mean, there are more homeless children today um, than there were during the Great Depression, right? So that over the past 50 years, things have not steadily gotten better. Instead, um, you know, homelessness has become a, a new phenomenon. The, the militarization of our border and the deportation of immigrants is, you know, is, is, is insane what's going on. And so the conditions are, are very grave. And this is a two-prong, a multi-prong, uh, if I may say, uh, in terms of the campaign. Now, you're doing consciousness raising and educating people as you go uh, on this campaign. But at the same time, you're targeting people who can be effective agents of change on behalf of the people uh, that are poor. And uh, so you'll be targeting probably municipal governments, uh, state governments, and of course, uh, Washington itself. Uh, who are you hoping to speak to that can affect some change as well, besides the movement and the rallies you're, um, you're organizing? Yeah, so, she, so we, um, you know, so the 40 days of moral direct action will be taking place in state capitals across the country and in Washington, D.C. And, and the, the kind of twofold purpose or goals of this stage of this campaign, these 40 days, is to shift the moral narrative. Um, so to start actually raising the kinds of, of issues that are, are taking place and, and the kind of false narratives that are out there that blame people for their problems, blame poor people for, for their poverty and, and um, and demonize folks for, for what they're going through. Um, also, uh, but then also to build power um, from the ground up. And so the idea is that this is an organizing campaign. This is a, a movement building um, campaign and that um, we will go to state houses across the country, people will, um, where a lot of, of laws and legislation are, are being passed that adversely affect people of color, poor people, the, the, the earth that we live in um, and, uh, you know, the priorities of this nation and, and that we are targeting those state houses and Washington, D.C. And, and in Washington, D.C., we're actually focusing on um, Mitch McConnell and, and Paul Ryan and the, you know, the roles that they play in terms of um, the Senate and the House because of, um, again, so many of the, the problems that are, are affecting people are happening, you know, those places. Um, and so, so the, the purpose of the campaign is to shift the narrative and to build power, to be able to actually put together some real solutions, um, but, and, and a coalition or a fusion movement of people who will stay together for the long haul to, to not just win one policy change, but will we'll keep the pressure up to, to, you know, change the whole direction and, and the priorities of, of the policies. And so, you know, we partly came up with this, um, this 40 days, looking at the, the 2016 presidential election. Um, we would do this no matter who had won. Um, we would have done this, you know, years ago, just because how things are going. But in those two, in that 2016 presidential election, um, when we looked at the 26 debates that happened um, in that election, um, and those were in the primaries and in the general election, not one of those 26 debates took on the issue of poverty for any real time, took on living wages, took on health care in terms of universal health care, single payer health care, took on voting rights and the suppression of voting rights. Um, so the issues that are affecting the majority of people in this country were not the issues that were talked about. Um, by our candidates and elected officials. And we need to change that. You know, we, we see this campaign as, as fighting for the heart and soul of our nation, for the heart and soul of our democracy, um, for the heart and soul of the people who make up this nation um, so that the, so those hearts can continue to beat, so that people can continue to, to you know, make a living and, and, and try to, to change things for the better for themselves and their communities. Right. And finally, Liz, um, 
Yesterday, USDA signaled that they would relax on the rules of administering um, the uh, food stamps in the country, and they would perhaps devolve and provide greater flexibility for states uh, to administer it as they wish. And uh, this really allows them to put greater controls on food stamps. For example, I think in Wisconsin, um, they're talking about having drug testing before yeah. you get your food stamps. I mean, these are some of the conditions that people are facing. And here we are talking about, you know, very minimal amount of money necessary to provide people with food. Um, um, how do you plan to attack something like that? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, you know, this the, this recent announcement, everything for, and like the tax, but I mean, all of the things that are coming out in our news all the time, just continue to signal that we need this Poor People's Campaign. We need a national call for a moral revival. And we need to be building from the states up um, because so many of these um, policies that are, are coming, you know, are just, are 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 punishing poor people punishing marginalized people, um, blaming folks for, you know, the problems that they're, they're facing. Um, and, and right now that happens and we're not organized. We're not, um, mobilized. We're not able to be raising the question of how can people be starving? I mean, cause people are, and how can people being denied food? Cause they are in, in the richest nation in the world, when we throw away more food than it takes to feed everybody. But, but, but currently we have people that are, are, are not able to feed and clothe and, and shelter their families. And so, so, so this campaign um, in the moral agenda that we, that we use to, to organize those 40 days and going forward will, will take on the issues that are affecting people from food stamps to education from healthcare to living wage jobs to guaranteed income. I mean, th these, you know, to environmental protections and their, you know, and voting rights. I mean, all of all of the issues we're talking about. We we need proactive, visionary, moral solutions to those. Um, and and we actually plan to have, you know, the 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 agenda that we're that we're working on and that we'll be bringing to state capitals and DC. Um, is, is one that, you know, doesn't just say, can we have a little bit more? Doesn't just say when they cut us off of things, we want to fight back a little bit. But, but says, you know, in this society, in this world, it, it is immoral and it is violent for people to be without food, to be without adequate education, to be without all the things that human beings need to survive and thrive. And, um, and that a different way is possible. And so, so we will be working with organizations um, who are made up of very grassroots leaders. This campaign is, is being done with poor people, not for people, for poor people. And, and poor folks are, are in the lead of, of much of this work. Um, and then we've also connected up with, with other organizations, advocacy organizations and activists, as well as moral leaders and clergy. Um, to be able to say that, you know, time's up. We need, we need a, a moral movement in this country that puts the needs of people first and puts people first um, and puts uh, corporations and, and the wealthy, um, you know, on notice for the fact that, that, that we, we need to change the direction that things are going in. All right, let's say thank you for joining us today. Thank you for doing this campaign along with your colleagues. And uh, we'll be there with you um, during those 40 days and along the way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.